So to the untrained eye, you'd believe that uh, we have actually gone back in time to the 1800s, but that is in fact not true. We're on location today for the fear of the invisible man, where they're shooting some scenes with a horse and carriage, some actors and some people with cameras. Come, come this way. I'm really enjoying it. I've seen the original movie. I saw it a while back, um, just when I first read this script. So there's been lots of ideas, uh, lots of influence from that as well, which has been really nice. And then, of course, the, the modern one that was uh, recently made, um, that's, that was really great to watch. I learned so much just from watching that, and especially how the actress worked with the scenes where she was playing to, to nothing or to green screen people um, so I learned a lot from watching those and watching the making of both of those movies as well. I think you know what it's 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 interesting because the film is all about um, my characters trying to set up asylums and she wants to help people around her um, but women had no rights back then so they couldn't work so she's she's selling all her things because her husband's passed away so it's, that's the only way to survive is because she can't get a job. Um, and she wants to change things around her and, and make, uh, step, take things forward. Um, and that's something she's unable to do as well. So I think it's, it's really interesting. And I think it's something, especially with so many women's movements at the moment, I think it's something that all really reflects what's going on um, because that's what women started doing in the Victorian era is they, 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 couldn't, they couldn't go to university, they couldn't graduate. Um, and some of the first women to ever go to university was around the same period that we're filming in. So it's it's been really educational actually from that point of view. Hi, gents. Have a quick chat, a brick flicks behind the scenes. Sure, brick yeah, flicks behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah, just a little uh, show people what, what's happening. Uh, if you want to just introduce yourselves, maybe, and then the production you're working on. A penny per per minute we want on this. Oh, yeah, yeah. On. Just in a hat, sir, if you wouldn't mind, sir, that would be appreciate that. Oh, yeah, take yeah. Contactless. yeah, always. Right. Yeah. That's a no problem at all. Oh. It's the costumes, isn't it? We were saying yeah, it's earlier great fun, about yes. Nice to be in the costumes in location. Up. Yeah, like this. It's good fun. And the location is absolutely fantastic as well. Is it a lot easier to slip into the roles or like, into the backgrounds? It yeah. helps. Yeah. It helps. Yeah, definitely. I think that's what it is, isn't it? When you're in a costume and you're all made up, you get straight into character in that way. Yeah, yeah it makes it more fun as well. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do, I want to shoot a, a shot from here. We have to get the horse back in. And we'll just do an over on the green screen that can comp in with our church background. Okay. Yeah. So we'll have to get the horse yep. in for that. Yeah. And we'll shoot it clean and then we can just blur it accordingly. It's a nice adaptation actually, where in the original book the film centres on Reginald Kemp uh, in his manor house and as an old colleague comes, uh, comes to visit him, who's Cade Griffin, who's the Invisible Man, and he kind of uh, threatens uh, Reginald to say, look, I'm going to stay here while I do my reign of terror in the, in the local village. But in our story, uh, it's his wife, who's a widow, called Adeline Kemp, so she's the heroine and she obviously knows uh, Griffin from her university days, just in the same way that her husband did, and he stays at her house while he's doing his reign of terror. But we kind of hint at a little bit more of a, a romance or something back in the day where maybe Cave Griffin was uh, in the running to maybe be with her, and she opted to, to, to go and marry Reginald. So that's still lingering in the background. Griffin still likes her, it's a little bit uncomfortable. She's staying in the same, you know, he's staying in the same house. Um, so we've got like a little bit of a romantic subplot in addition to um, our invisible man running around the town, you know, causing the, the chaos. So these, Robin can look at that now. Yeah. She doesn't need to worry about these essays. Yeah. Okay. Should I, do you want to yeah. call her? Or you, or you can. Do you Rob, need... Robin. 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 I need the cloak. Yeah, we're doing 54. Katie, she's got She's holding it in her hand. So basically this one here, you're looking out the window. <laughs> Staring out the window, she rides into town. Cut. Cool. Yeah. Can I read the, the, the scene so I know what I'm thinking about while I'm staring at the window? Bishop White, Mrs. Kemp, did the actress steals my script, what can I do? Yeah, sure. Is that 
gold and delicious. Oh yeah. I've done that one. How many we have? 28, yeah? That is a brew as well. 28 and three more? Preserve. How many we have? Can you, um, have we got um, an arm on a sea stand so we get it sort of somewhere around here? Yep. That's no problem. That's you hear that? No problem for me. Thank you. Do you hear that? That's the first time he said that. <laughs> So the scene we're, we're about to shoot is, um, it's a green screen, but it's, um, I'm riding into town reflecting on something that I've just been given some evidence where I can discover who the Invisible Man is. So it's going to be a very quick scene. <laughs> uh, I think, you know, there's lots of ch visually challenging stuff here. Uh, a lot of effects, obviously, visually, because the Invisible Man has to be invisible. Uh, so we're doing lots of multiple takes of the same scenes so that we can take the man out afterwards. And that, that takes up time. You have to build it all into your schedule. Uh, we're also in a world with no electricity. So everything is being lit either by candle or candle effect lights. Um, and we're using a bit of haze. And the, the haze, all, <coughs> you always have to judge the haze because as it's an effects film, if you put too much haze in, it's been difficult to put the effects over the top. So it's all about balancing act. You know, normally you fill your frame with your actors. Uh, when you've got an invisible man, you're filling your frame with one actor, but you have to remember to give space for the other actor. And we're, you know, the invisible man will be seen through breaths, uh, through movements in fog and things like that. But you have to always remember to create that space in the frame to allow that to happen, you know, in a, in a real world rather than sort of cramming it into the edge. Yeah, so we, we have used references. Actually, the main reference we've used to not be original uh, Invisible Man films, but more films like Wolfman, okay. um, Winchester. So uh, where there's a slightly heightened reality, where we're trying to tell a story in a, um, uh, yes, yeah, so almost comic strips things. So we're using very high, saturated colors, blues okay. and yellows. Um, there's not the original man in the uh, outfit that, uh, we, we first see our Invisible Man in, you know, with classic hat and glasses. Yeah. So uh, it's more a costume, a costume nod than a photography nod, in a sense. Well, we're just acting and the, invisible, the fear of the Invisible Man. Nice. Have you done any acting before? Yeah, I did do it in a different film. Yeah? Why but I only run around and play tag. Nice. What are you doing in this one? Um, well, we're just being standing an there. Urchin. Yeah. Standing there, um, selling flowers. It's an original Victorian carriage and nothing has been replaced on it since then. So it is, and it's fully working still, and apparently the date is stamped inside the wheel. So they take the wheel off and the date's stamped inside. Yeah, so it's all, it's all original. This vehicle would have just been like a town vehicle. I mean, generally you have different different levels. Like you'd have a town coach, whereas this is um, what they call a growler. You have a similar one like this that doesn't isn't isn't iron shod. So they were called a growler as a nickname because they go on the cobbles and make quite a lot of noise. Um, but this is a, a, the shape of a brome basically, um, and that would be quite a common city city vehicle that people would drive around. Not a for hire one. This would be more of a family that sort of thing. Um, but sometimes the cab drivers would have these as well, rather than uh, the old ones. Just go to there. Yeah, go to there. Do you want a little bit green off the edge? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's nice with the side of the carriage door. So maybe a spare. Okay, let's do that. Okay, Bori, maybe throw a glance out the window. Yeah, yeah, just... Th throw a look out the window to your left. That side, yeah. What's the other side look like? Yeah, look this way. So show me the look. Yeah, okay, let's do this again. So a little bit facing forward, a little bit towards us. And action. Yeah, we wanted to, we always want audiences to come away from this thinking that it's like a, a classic universal horror movie 
which is family friendly, you know, and, and we're going for that a little bit of an, uh, we're not going for too much realism, it's a little bit more fantasy, um, yeah, and, and, and sort of aesthetics over realism, um, and just hoping that the audiences find it, you know, a fun, family friendly adventure.